Chit chat with cutie, that's what they said, yep. Chit chat with cutie was killing. Chit chat with QT for all of this tea. Hey cuties, thank you guys so much for joining me for another video. If you are not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Please also hit the notification bell. That way you'll know when I drop future videos and also hit the like button for me just wanted to bring you guys especially those of you that are not on instagram wanted to bring you males live from today with dr shanita foster now if you guys are not familiar with shanita foster she's been out here in the streets for quite some time i do remember seeing her on football wives and if I'm not mistaken, somewhere else on TV. But I've been following Shanita from my real page um, for years on Instagram. When I tell you that this live was so, uh, is raw the word I want to use? Transparent. Shanita asked some great, great questions. She touched on Stormy. And I was not shocked, but surprised to hear that Shanita was at one of Mel's uh, Mimosa with Melody uh, event. Stormy was there. This is when Stormy was pregnant. And you guys will have to listen to see what they had to say about that. She asked Mel about Sheree a whole lot. But what I really, really got a kick out of is Shanita hooked Mel up with a potential suitor who was rich and Mel turned him down. So Mel did go out on a date, but you know, she was open with the guy and Shanita and said that, you know, she just didn't feel like he was the guy for him. Let me tell you this. I'm married. God's still working on me. Because that man, if I'm not mistaken, Shanita said he tried to send Mel 250 dozen roses. I'm going to repeat that. 250 dozen roses, which amounted to $12,000. So you guys will have to take a look and see how that turned out as well. But I love this. This was about depression coming up out of it. This was about two friends, real friends. Um, I love when she said that Mel basically reached out to her initially because Shanita was having a little breakdown, if you will, on social media. Just awesome. What we all talk about a lot, especially in my members only lives, as far as building some type of sisterhood with like-minded individuals so as i mentioned guys just wanted to bring it to you this is the whole video it was over an hour and i do hope that you guys listen to every bit of it first of all miss mel is looking good she's out of the country that tan looks absolutely amazing and even with her being out of the country she still took some time to bring her supporters something with her friend and this is one of the reasons that i love mel so much because outside of the show she does things like this and it's been our hope that the other ladies on the show would do something similar so people can really connect to them. They claim that these millimeters are just fanatics, but no, we get the chance and opportunity to connect with Mel on different levels outside of Love and Marriage Huntsville. But like I said, take a look, guys. I'll be back at the end with just a little, little more commentary. 
And real quickly, guys, there will be some freezing, not for long, but again, Mel is out of the country, connected to Wi-Fi. But again, it is not long periods of time. All right, chat with you guys at the end of the video. with this lady i can't let me get myself you didn't say you was gonna be out of town on vacation she's well, giving me I another question that I mean, don't I even worry about, about it <laughs> <laughs> i know what i like to do these days i like so to who be on vacation gets to go first okay. i get to ask the question first and then you go well, okay, so I thought about that. First of all, you look Do so you? pretty. I love your hair, okay. and Shemita. I love your hair. And when we get off this live, I want, I want to tell you this. I found a video that you and I did years ago cutting up. We were out at a restaurant in Atlanta outside. I don't know if you remember. We were outside, okay. And we was over there cutting up, and you were doing, the, you were recording, and we were doing all these movements, looking all cute. I'm going to post that just so that people can understand that um, this is a true friendship. We are actually really friends. Like yeah. I like to say, in real life, real time. <laughs> real life, real time, okay? Um, so I was thinking, instead of us maybe doing a few minutes you, a few minutes me, maybe we can have it more conversational like, and as it leads to certain questions you want to ask, okay. we can ask I'm them. ready. And my first you know, I've been waiting for this for the last couple of days. I'm on the I'm comfortable. I'm ready. I ain't even going to my normal spot. I said, let me get on the couch. So I'm ready. Oh, oh my God. Well, I have. I got a drink. drink. I got my shot ready. ready. You want to talk about my shot? I'm going to take a shot. I'm ready. Okay. Well, we're going to do this. So, Chimney, the first thing I want to do is lead in with um, you have a book. Girl, I'm not tripping. I'm depressed. And depression definitely is something that's big, even in the black community, but it's not talked about, right? What was one of your first signs when you realized that you were actually depressed? So my depression happened in 2014 going into 15. And I think social media is like light years ahead, right? Where we are now from back to 14, 15. And I just remember like, I'm not 
a huge crybaby. Like I'm not a person. Only time I was really crying was like when I was pregnant. Oh. You know, you just cry for no reason. And I, I kept feeling emotional. And the biggest thing for me was not being able to control my emotions. Meaning, if I can't control how happy I want to be, how sad I want to be, I knew it was an issue. I would wake up in the morning and I would just feel low. And I, everything that I tried to do to bring back my happiness, it wasn't working. So that was like one of the true telltale signs to be like, something is wrong. Like something is off because I can't find my happy. And I hear people say that all the time. Like, you know, when you try to find your happy, you might go shopping. You might call your girlfriends to go hang out. You know, you might take a trip. You know, for some of us, I'm not a drinker, but if I'm low, I'll grab a bottle of bathing. Something to be like, okay, let me, I couldn't pick myself back up. And that was the first sign. Mm. Wow. And so based on the title of your book, with some of your friends thinking you just tripping, oh, she tripping, oh, she acting funny, oh, she this, that, and the other. And you like, girl, I'm not tripping, I'm depressed. The, the, title, the title came, title Detroit came Girl. And we use the word tripping all the time. Like, you tripping. And it's funny, because we used to always say auntie was tripping, uncles was tripping, not knowing that there was something going on mentally. And I threw my best friend under the bus, shout out to Ray. She's in the book because she came over my house one day and she was coming to borrow something, by the way. And I was sitting in a closet crying and no flex, no brag, but it's a big closet. And so she walked in my closet and I literally was sitting on the floor crying. And my best friend going through clothes, shopping, looking for bags, looking for shoes. And I'm crying, crying, crying. And when I was coming out of my depression, I was getting help. I asked her one day, I said, let me ask you a question. You came over my house. I'm crying. I'm in the closet when you get there crying. I said, you didn't see a sign. My own best friend was like, I was looking at you like I see Gucci, Louis, Birkin, Fendi. What is she crying about? I thought you were just tripping. And so the title of the book was like, girl, I'm not tripping, I'm depressed. Because anybody that I asked that was close to me, their mindset was, oh, she's just tripping. And I think we say that about people, like she acting up or she acting out or she acting funny. I even tell my business people now, I'm like, if I spaz out on you for a reason, the back of your mind should say something's going on mentally, spiritually, emotionally, because that's not that person's behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Wow. So it's also an obligation for us as friends to pay attention to our friends, right? To see like, no, that's not normally that person. Something else is going on. What's going on? And then in that moment, show up. Not to go shopping in the closet, but show up as that friend. I got you. I got you. Be like, girl, what's going Roger, on? He, uh, P. Henson just said that in an interview I was watching the other day. And she said, I love that I got pull up yeah. friends, you know, that they heard something in my voice or they felt something in the text. And ironically, the person who came to get me out of the closet is gonna be a little controversial. Some love her, some like her, some hate her. But hey, I'm one of the godparents to her children. Sabrina from the Glam University was the person that came and got me because she called me and she said she could tell in my voice something was wrong. And I'm the godparent to one of her children. She would tell her whole story. I, I kept her son when she was incarcerated. And literally, we're very close. I'm very close to her child. And she wanted to bring her child to me. Girl, everybody come stay at my house. Everybody bring the kids. And so she said she could tell my voice was something, something was wrong. So she didn't want to bring honor. So she said she called me the next day because she wanted to drop him off. And she said she just knew something was in my voice. And she was the person she pulled up at my house. I had on funky pajamas. My favorite Uggs got a hole in it. She was like, let's go take a ride. And I remember we went to this park in Atlanta. She never tell nobody the name. It's a hidden gym. If they knew about it, Atlanta, everybody would be there. But it has like some waterfalls or something. You got to know her spirit. She came outside. She lit the candle. She said, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. And I sat there and cried for hours. She drove me home. When she got to my driveway, she said, well, I'm going to come over here every day until we figure it out. So she was one of the pivotal people. I owe her that. Through all her nonsense, her rants, 
what people like, don't like. She is the person that came and got me out the closet and she came and got me every day. And we went and sat at that park every day until I broke down. And then I was like, this is what I don't like. This is what's going on. This is how I feel. And that's when I was able to recognize that through all the money, through all the cars, through all the success, through all the kids, I had to tell her that a few days before that, I attempted to kill myself. So she was one of the people that was like, all right, now it's time to get some help. How are we going to come from this? And love me so much so, I was in the process of coming out of a depression. That girl still made me come speak at her event for over 500 people. So she called me and was like, oh, you coming to speak at my event? I was like, I'm coming out of a whole depression. I'm getting myself together. She said, that's even better. She said, it's going to be a room full of broken people and people that need help and they need your truth. So you gonna come speak to them people and you gonna come talk to them. And she made me go speak. Mm. Wow, oh my gosh, girl, you had, I teared up a little bit when she's sharing that story. It's because, you know, you don't come across people that genuine and that caring and who look past self enough to even see that somebody else is hurting. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that just in your voice, her spirit connected in a way to be able to pick up that yeah. something was shaking in your spirit. You know what I'm saying? That man, that's the kind of friend that we need, right? That's the kind of sister that we need. That's the kind of sisterhood that we need where we are literally really on the battleground. Because in that moment when she picked you up every day, she was on the battleground with you. But they don't know that's how you me know what I'm you saying? met. That's because I just got chills back before yeah. everybody was crying on social media. I think I was one of the first people to ever do it, y'all. I woke up one day and mm -hmm. I think it was after that and I was having a horrible day. Like I was having a horrible day. And I think people don't, they miss it when you live in the spotlight. Cause some of y'all not old enough to know, I did TV light years ago. My whole life was in front of the world. Thank God it wasn't social media we have now. I couldn't even live through Twitter. I don't know what I would have did if I had to live through Instagram on TV. Cause Twitter almost took me out. And I remember I woke up that day and I was crying so bad. And I was like, I just want to be a human. I just want to make it like I have real problems like everybody else. And I got on live and I was crying on live. Like I'm having a horrible day. My kids getting on my nerves. I'm tired, things not going right. Before it was the mail that y'all see on TV on the number one show on OWN Network. She slid in my DM and she said, hey girl, she said, I don't remember, I gotta go find that message, but she said like, I'm praying for you. I felt your tears. And we started our social media relationship and we just started talking and, you know, sharing. She's a mom, I'm a mom. And then just fast forward, a genuine friendship can be built through social media because we met each other through social media but it was through one of those moments. It wasn't on a, I need something from you, you need something from me, you know, let's collaborate, let's make some money. It was on some real human woman to woman. I'm a mother, you're a mother, we're going through things. How can we support each other? That's right. They don't want to need to let the people know. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So now I'm going to get into a little bit of a messy piece of this, okay? And that is very true. But I'm going to get into a messy piece of this now. Was it depression before? Uh, no, that was way, way before. Which That's one? fact. So let me tell you. So let me tell you why and it was before. The before. And only people that's on this live know this because I have not made a public service announcement, uh, a post, a Instagram, a Facebook, a tweet, a interview, none of that about me being divorced. That's just not who I am. I have children who could probably hear me. They're old enough at this point now. But I have always lived my life to only tell my part of the story. I'm one of them people, I ain't telling my mama's side, I ain't telling my kids' father's side. I never expose other people. I'm allowed to tell my truth. I'm not allowed to, to tell their part of the story. But I went through a depression, and it, it was a big part of the financial. We were going through the transition. Most people don't know NFL stands for not for long. And it was not for long, even though 10 years was a long time in the league. 
And so my depression came when I saw the world not only turn their back on him, but turn their back on me. Meaning that for athletes, the best way I can explain it, somebody been screaming this man's name every day since he was six years old. Go, you the best, you are amazing, you are awesome. And then you wake up one day and nobody says your name ever again in life. That people don't understand how that is to swallow that pill. People don't understand how it is to be able to have the world at your fingertips, everybody want to help. And then everybody goes silent when you can't give them a football ticket or a basketball ticket or you can't get them in an event. So we had that piece of it. People that I thought were my friends or even my family that I thought was my, I got people that don't call me ever. But when it was a football ticket or a Super Bowl or an all-star to be had, they was at every Christmas, every birthday, every Thanksgiving. The second piece of it was mine was, and don't nobody steal my line, when you lose your why, you lose your way. I was losing my why because I'm a true philanthropist. I have given over. Now he was mad at this in the divorce. I have given over documenting three million dollars of my personal money. So that means whenever I want to do a project, whenever I want to build a school, whenever I want to do an orphanage, I dug in my bank account and I took it out. Those children upstairs don't have college funds because I cashed in a 529s. A 529 is where you put money for your children to have a college education that the government does not tax that money so you can hold it there, right? If no one ever took, I took them kids money and spent the money. Cause I'm like, if God gave it to me once, he could give it to me again. They young, they two, three, four, five, six. I get the money back again. So in the transition of us changing livelihoods, I was no longer able to serve. And when I couldn't serve and I couldn't give, my whole, whole entire spirit just dropped out of my body because God birthed me as a server. And at the time, I didn't know how to serve without giving all of my personal. Now I know how to ask. I'm asking y'all for some money and I don't even feel bad about it. I'd be like, can I get $5 for some sanitary napkins? Because I ain't gave $3 million. So I know you could give me $5. So when I was in the depression, it was trying to balance what is this transition, trying to keep him from wanting to off himself, trying to maintain my children on a level of lifestyle that now has to change. And now throw in there, I can't even be and do what God called me to be. I don't want to be here no more. I might as well just die. I just... What am I here for? I can't do what that God asked me to do. I can't provide the way I want to provide. My happiness is gone. My joy is gone. So what's the purpose of living? If you don't have a purpose or a why or a reason to live, what are you living for? Mm, mm, mm. Come on now. Come on now. I love that. I'm going to turn it on. We get to the good stuff. I love it. all that crying. No, that was it is the core of who I am because people think I'm mean. Uh, people think I'm closed off. I protect my spirit now. And, and because of who I am, I have to make sure I guard because I'm so open to bring everybody into my life. I, I want to save everybody. I want everybody to win. I want everybody to make money. And unfortunately, the world is not set up that way. People just want to take, 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 take. You know, when I ordered your skincare line, I didn't call a mail and say, can I get a discount? I paid my, I waited for a special though. I ain't gonna lie, I'm hood rich. I waited for the special to go up and then I ordered my products just like everybody else. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, and you have to, you have to give and plant the seeds that you want and life before you can never receive. See, the problem is people don't want to put seeds in the ground. They just want something. To they want something. To no, they no, want to do that. What they call it, pick your brain. They want to ask for something for free. They want to come into the network and the network and not even put nothing in the ground. So you have to plant a seed in the ground. So I'm about to get to my question. I'm about to take a shot. And by the way, you know, I was going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Why am I so tied to this alive juice? It was because I was living and I wasn't alive. And when I realized that your health is really your wealth and going through cancer 
with my daughter. My daughter has stage three ovarian cancer. Going through cancer with my daughter, going through the things that are on site, can't tell my daddy's story, but what my dad is going through now, watching people um, disintegrate in front of us because of their health. So you gonna give me a product called Alive and I almost wasn't living? Oh baby, I'm gonna, you don't have to pay me to promote it because I'm gonna tell the whole world freely and effortlessly, if you are living and you are not alive, you need to get alive. So I'm gonna take a shot and now I'm about to give y'all this tea with melon. Hold on, I'm gonna have my shot too. I'm gonna have my shot too. I'm gonna get you some alive when you get back. Now let's talk, cause I got some questions, ma'am. So here's question number one. I never watched a TV show in my life. People, like, they think I'm lying. Like, if we did a lot of detector, I've never watched this show. Not one, ep not even a half of an episode. Because I don't even know how to get on on my TV. That's just the truth. So, what I need to understand when I scroll through Instagram, and I want to know why you think this, that, you know, they show these suggested posts that all of a sudden, people went from loving you. I'm talking about, they was like, Mel, 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 I love you. You're amazing, you great. To now I'm starting to see Pose, you a mean girl, you nasty. Uh, we don't like her no more on the show. And I think I even called and texted a couple times, like, what's going on over there? Why these people don't like you? And you ain't really respond. So I want to respond. I want you to respond to the people. Why do you think some of public perception is they don't like you? So <laughs> First, let me say, um, honestly, maybe these are just not becoming the suggested posts for you, but out of the gate, I had people who loved me and I had people who didn't like me. I had people who saw me come in with this blunt swoop, you know, thin figure, had it, you know, had the, the husband and these beautiful children and this home and these businesses. And I think a lot of people um, felt some kind of way. I don't like to use the word jealousy, but um who didn't even know me and and they looked at the outer of me and in some kind of way felt some kind of way so i've always had people who just love me and people who didn't like me um the mean girl i think comments that you see now or that i mean or i'm nasty and this and that is because i've gotten to a place where i'm speaking up for myself um i'm moving how i feel meaning um if I feel some kind of way regarding you, I'm not about to put on for the camera for you, if that makes sense. So then that comes off as, oh, she's being mean, rather than us as Black women understanding that it's okay to set boundaries. It's okay not to smile in the face of people who you know don't mean you no good. Like, it's okay not to shake hands with the enemy. It's okay, you know what I'm saying, to be like, no, nah, I'm good with that. You ain't welcome to this event, so I'm putting you out. Or whatever the case may be, you walked in this meeting trying to shake my hand, no thank you. Like, we're so used to putting on. And even though we know this person may not have our best at heart, our, uh, may not want what's best for us, um, may not really be um, on our team, so to speak, but we still supposed to smile. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you, hi! Oh, how about no? right and i think that that is where because i am showing how i feel it oh she's mean she's a mean girl and she's this i mean people who know me in real life i've never had people who really know me in real life like for real outside of tv say i'm a mean girl to be true with you people who are on this platform with me or on this show they never called me a mean girl yeah before we fell out yeah, wait, i was never oh, that, a girl so I was never, that, oh, this is a great girl. transition because now i got my tooth we're gonna find out the truth right here right now so i flew oh wait I, this lady got her whole butt out see this is why these people don't like her on some days she be bothering the good people i can't see the comments that y'all making because i think because we live so i'm gonna have to go back and read all these comments after the live because my scroll is not scrolling up so I don't know what the comments are saying. Y'all need to take a shot of a live though while we wait for her to come back. Y'all need to go, what is my, I don't even know my website. Oh, I think it's Health and Wealth with Dr. Shanita. Y'all need to get a lot while well, Melody got her butt out, okay? I'm gonna tell her, but get just Google Macaroon. 
you'll know why I'm alive, okay? Okay, listen. True story. This no, I'm back. I'm going to get this. This is a fact. And you don't know I was going to ask you this, but it's bothering me because I don't like it. So I flew to Huntsville when you were filming for, uh, I think last year, year before last. I don't know what year it was. But I met that girl. Girl, what's the girl? Well, you might not want to say her name. The girl that owned a hair care line. And somebody typed the yeah. girl name. You want to say the girl with name? What's the girl name? The, okay, okay so keep listening. So, yes. Okay. So I met this girl. Now, I, again, I don't watch the show, so you have to help me. The girl was nice. Mel brought this lady to this event. I'm talking about, I felt like you shifted the whole event to make sure that she was comfortable because she was pregnant and we were outside. I watched you serve the girl. I watched you give her your whole platform of people that were there to talk about herself and her business and what she had going on and all of those things. And I'm a real person. I watch real interaction. And in that moment, and I seen her and I met her and I listened to her speak, I felt there was a genuine either connection or friendship or association. I don't know what it was because that was my first time meeting. But again, I'm on social media and I'm scrolling and they're going off about the girl. And I'm like, well, who's the girl? So you know me, I got to play the social media game because I'm not watching the TV show. I refuse. I know you in real life. I can just call you. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. Is this the girl who, like, is this the girl that that you was nice to, but now all of a sudden she on the show and now she got a problem with you. Am I off? Or you gotta explain to me what's going on because I want to know what's going on. Okay, girl, you got it. And y'all, she has not asked me. This is so crazy. So you've been holding Because I want to be messy. Me I'm like, are they okay. friends? Are they not friends? <laughs> like last time I seen y'all, y'all was friends. And, and you were nice, and I yeah. seen you catering and, and getting fans and giving a girl cold beverages, and like everybody was moving. Team Stormy let me help this lady because she's pregnant, and we cut some speakers so she can speak, and yeah. so I'm lost. Because if I'm your friend, I need to be your friend publicly, privately, and on TV. So I'm trying to figure out what had happened. Okay. Okay, good question. So yeah, that's that is stormy. So there were a few people mm -hmm. there. You remember yep. Mimi was there as well. So um so yeah, so no Stormy was pregnant at the time. It was Mama Moses with Melody then. Um so whenever we wrapped last season, um there were some things that happened that caused me to change my number and caused me to really go within, like to the point where the only people who had my number was about five people. Even production didn't have my number. It was a big. Um, and because like she didn't only share with me, because she wasn't hearing from me and didn't have my number, um, she felt some kind of way about that. I saw her at the reunion. We spoke. We hugged. Um, your uh, wife. Not my wife. Not my wife. I saw her at the reunion. You know, my, my you on the island. I'm frozen. I'm not frozen. Hold on a second. I don't want to go out and leave this live. Hold on. Let me see something. Okay. Am I still frozen? Am I frozen? Get you, get you from yeah. spinning in a circle. If you go out, I can but then I won't be able to save it. The, will it save? Oh, but it was on your live, so it should save. Right, yeah. And it's spinning anyway. You ain't talking, you ain't moving. Right. Okay, I'm gonna go out. Circle. Wait, Single Glow said you are not frozen. Somebody said we're not frozen, so I'm not going out. Okay, don't go out. I'm frozen, but if they say you're not, that's cool. I, don't have to, I can't see you. Just know that, but that's okay with me. So, um, so, the reunion happened. 
happened. I spoke to her, I um, told her she looked beautiful. Then when we came, that was October. So I told her it's a reunion. We started filming in December. December, our first thing we had together, even when production flew in and met with us, they were asking how is everything for different cast members. Her name came up. I was like, oh, I said, you know, I haven't talked to her in a while, but we're good. She's fine, you know, there's no issues with she and I. And then the, we started in December. And that's when I heard at Kimmy's party the issue with um, her not having my number and how she wasn't gonna DM me. And then the stuff came out about how her mom had been feeling about me and what she'd been saying. So it just put even more of a distance, I would say, between our us and our relationship. Um, so, so yeah, I I don't know. It's kind of it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. For sure, but you know me, like I'll just move on and let things go, keep moving, and live my life, and do my thing, um, and not worry too much about things that. Okay, and then and here's my other question, because I think people uh, don't <laughs> understand. And what am I gonna say? So it's you, Mel, going in and out. I don't want you to stop stop the live, but it's going. They, I, they say they can see me. It's you, I told you it's you, cause you on that. So, so, let me see, say something again. Yeah, it's a little off. You breaking up just a little bit. You're going to the hotel. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh my gosh, now her whole thing spinning. Don't you lose it? Yeah, girl. I can hear you good now. now. We'll see if it keep you. I think it's just okay. okay. So, okay. Uh, I got a couple questions in me. How? I need you to explain to people because I think people don't get it, and I'm so far removed from television, right? And I tell people that if you're on TV, you have to live through everything that you're going through mentally spiritually emotionally sometimes even financially multiple times to have to go through uh, a divorce a separation and public can you tell them because i know you kind of said it but from like for real on a for real perspective can you tell them what it felt like like were you really hurt because some people be like oh well she didn't really care like that or she got over it too quick or she moved on too fast. And I think they just seeing it from the perspective from television. Were you really, really hurt? Like, were you like really side swipe? Like, yo, this is not what I really wanted for my marriage or for my kids. Okay. Oh, God dang. So by the time I left, um, were good in April 2020. By the time I left, I was already removed, if that makes sense. Um, before 2020, when things were happening, um, oh, my heart was shattered. I was broken, I was hurt. I spent, you know, I've shared this publicly before, like you, I spent many a days in the closet crying. Um, it was devastating. It was devastating to see and think that what I worked and had been building with someone all this time was shattering, right? Um, was coming to end. And then at times you would have those moments of hope where it seemed like things were getting better. Because who, you know, at the end of the day, you want your family to work, right? So it would seem like things were getting better. So you're like, okay, we got this. We're going to make it through this. It's just a storm we went through. We good then for your heart to be broken again. And I think what happened, Shanita, my heart had gotten broken so many times prior to 2020, so much disappointment prior to 2020, that by the time I left in 2020, I really didn't care no more. You know what I'm saying? It was like I was numb to that whole situation. Like it, it got to the point where it was just like, you know what, whatever, God, you gotta have better for me because I've gone through this for three years and this has been crazy, you know what I'm saying? I've been heartbroken, I've cried, I've prayed, I've done all of this only to continue to be disrespected and walked over and 
disrespected by more than one person. So by the time 2020 hit, why you see me now so quickly in a place of happiness, in a place of joy and light is because literally it was a burden lifted at that point. Like I walked away knowing I would never go back. And I never went back to them. I never did. I never had a desire. I never thought about it. It ain't been no uh, rendezvous, no hookups or nothing. It has no, never been any of that. So if you got um, his so when all I the way back together, because I got another question you might not answer. But say, for instance, he went away, he got himself together, went to go get some therapy, you know, some extra Jesus sprinkled on top of him. And he came back and said, OK, I, I want to try this again for our family. You just saying, I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question you That's might right. not like, but I, if you answer, then it's okay. good because I want to know. So we said we're gonna keep it 100. So I live in Atlanta, Georgia, y'all. I run around and I see so many celebrities, some friends, some associates. This is factual. So we're gonna get all the facts straight. So I go to, I think it was like a Christmas party or Thanksgiving, I think it was Friendsgiving or something, right? And I walk in, I'm gonna say the names because I don't owe my loyalty, but to nobody who I'm loyal to. So I'm on here with Mel. And I run into Sheree. Now Sheree's friends with Ebony, Electra, they're really, really close friends, right? And some other people that were in the room. And I seen her and I hug her and I do the normal, hey girl, hey, 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 what we do in Atlanta, took some pictures. Now Mel would say this wasn't the reason that I was on ice. But I had took a picture with Sheree and I post, I think I might've posted it in my stories. I don't think it's on my page, but I think I posted it in my stories. So when I didn't hear from Mel, I'm thinking Mel shade me. I'm like, this when I first seen it, cause I didn't know. Again, Instagram is giving me my news, which is bad y'all. But I finally see, okay, I think they dating, might be dating, still dating, I don't know. My only question, woman to woman, that I want to know, do, are you annoyed or don't like Sheree? Or do you feel a certain way about Martell? Because to me, I feel like once once we're divorced or removed or we're not together no more, the other person is free to date whomever they like, whomever they choose. Now, when you have children in the mix, like me, I triple dog dare somebody to introduce some of my kids to somebody because y'all gonna see me on Oprah, ESPN, CNN, Fox. I'm talking about I'm going out with a bank. I can say that out loud. We're not doing no children introductions. But I just want to know like the truth. Like, do you feel a certain kind of way about this lady? You don't care. The media playing games. Like, do you like her or don't like her? I just want to know. So then I know how to proceed. Okay, cool. So first, let me say this. I promise I don't even know the picture you're referring to. And you brought it up the other day. I would love for you, if you get a chance, to go to your archives, your story archives, and find that picture and see if mm -hmm. I saw it. Because I don't think I saw it. Like, honestly, I don't think I even saw it. Um, but I don't have a problem with Sheree. I do not. I think that people have been trying to create a problem with Sheree and I. And um, I don't know her to have a problem with her. This lady has done nothing to me. I've never hung out with her. I saw her one time when I was speaking in Birmingham. She had a booth set up on the floor. I was walking around patronizing all the businesses there. She, she was doing, um, I think, her book. Um, but I don't have a problem. I've always thought she was beautiful. Like, I've always, you know, I used to watch Housewives, of course, too. I'm only 37. So I used to watch Housewives. That was a show to watch. I always thought she was beautiful. I don't even know her to have a problem with her. She's done nothing to me. She ain't never said nothing out of the way to me. She ain't never called my phone or text me nothing. It's never been no issue. I think that people want it to be an issue. I think um, we're so used to pitting Black women against each other that that seems to be okay if we do, if we get them two going at each other, that'd be something. I'm not about to do that. I, I'm just not. Like, my womanhood doesn't allow me to do that. She's done nothing to me. Um, so I don't have an issue with her whatsoever. I don't have Cause you done froze again. You froze a little bit again. I think that oh, Jesus okay. said, move on, because you froze. 
I want to address a comment that I seen go past, right? Somebody said, oh, I thought this call was going to be about love and self-care. This is about love and self-care. I believe that as women, as friends, when we have transparent conversations, that is love and womanhood and self-care. Again, a lot of people that are in these comments are making comments pressing upon what you think you know, what you see on TV, or what you've seen on So I took this opportunity about things that I saw or I don't know. She started off by talking about mental health. So I think it's a balanced call because I'm out of people. You know, I get prejudged, people pre assume so many things about our life. So I was like, yo, let's have a transparent conversation, be it about kids or women or all on TV or what I've seen on the blogs. I want people, and I just got chills, to stop saying that self-care is only about the light and the fluffy stuff. So self-care is about uh, addressing and, and and speaking about the things that hurt, that were painful, that you want to grow through. I think there's truth and transparency. And if anybody think I'm trying to throw my friend under the bus, I'm not. I want to do this because. And not, let me tell y'all, and I'm not offended either. I'm not offended and I'm not bothered because I expect nothing less than from Sh for Shanita to bring the real questions and the tough questions. Like, she's just real like that. So I'm not offended, y'all. I am not bothered. This She's not asking anything that nobody has asked me before, right? Really? Somebody has asked. I've been asked that many times. The answer remains the same. Oh, people have asked me that before. Um, It remains the same. Like, a problem for what? You know what I'm saying? We've never had an exchange of words, a bad interaction. Okay. I you at the beach. I want to know like the rest of the good good folks. You keep going on these vacations. Who holding the camera on the other side? Because you be outside. And we see that you've been, at the, you've been traveling a whole lot, ma'am. So if you don't want to tell us if you're dating, um, when you're open or how you date, what are the things that are important to you now? Like being married, having multiple children. We both got multiple children. We talked about this the other day about being a big package, right? We are a big package. It's not like yeah. dating a 20 year old who has no kids, right? What does dating look like or feel like to you in this space? Cause you know, I, I got to start walking in this too, child. So I want to know what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like. They talking about tell us, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say one thing that I have honestly um, learned to love um, in these past, I would say probably past two and a half years is travel. I love to travel. Um, and I think some of it came from, I used to hate being in Huntsville. I had gotten to a point where I hated being in Huntsville. Um, I love being at home now, but at one point I was hating living in Huntsville just because there was such a dark cloud to me because so much had happened in Huntsville and those people were still very present. So it just was like a dark cloud for me. So I love to, I started traveling and getting out and going places. I've traveled more than I traveled my whole marriage in the past, you know, two years. I've traveled more than I traveled my whole marriage. Um, and for me, as a single black woman, for me to be able to do that is beautiful to me. For me to be able to hop up and last minute say, I'm out of here, I'm about to go out the country for a few days and do it, and don't have to worry about who gonna pay for it, not worry about can I afford to go, not worry about anything, but just go. This is bomb. Like, I love this life to be able to do as I want to do it when I want to. Um, believe it or not, like, right I'm here about again there, there you go i'm here by myself i do a lot of traveling by myself I'm, i don't travel by myself all the time <laughs> but i do a lot of traveling by myself it's peaceful i love it i'm about to go up here in paris by myself in a minute
<laughs> Girl, I know where these millimeters come from. You, the beehive, these millimeters are not, when I say they're not playing about you, these, <laughs> I'm reading the comments. These people do not play about you. Like, calm down. Loud. I gotta get my charge. Hold on. Oh, girl, ahead, like, listen, y'all, why she go to, listen, she told me to ask her the questions I want to ask. If y'all want to ask some questions, put the question in there y'all want to ask. I want to know, and I'm her real friend in real life. So the funny thing about it is all these people can comment and say, well, don't ask her who she with or mind your business, who she on vacation with. We just told y'all we real friends. So when y'all ask y'all friend who they on vacation with, we just doing it out loud so y'all can hear it too. It's so fun. You know, social, ooh, child. Social media, I'm trying to tell you, social so media be like, yo. So like, but I'm gonna ask the question they ask so I can ask the other question. I'm gonna, girl, what is the ring on your finger so these people can move on? You got a ring on? Cause they are going crazy. Yeah, I, yeah, I have a ring on, but I'm not Okay, there go that answer. Cause they like, I done seen, the hundred, the ring, yeah. the ring, the ring, the ring. Girl, these people said, really? the ring, the ring, the ring. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I, no, I'm not okay. engaged whatsoever. Mm -mm. Actually, to be honest with you, um, I'm not even sure, and I've said this before, so I'm not telling you anything I, I do. haven't said before. I'm not even sure if I want to get married again. You do, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong, I'm not sure if I want to. <laughs> Oh, I know you do. Let me be quiet. I'm gonna go to that just so you know. It's so in a different way though, when I'm going to it. Um, but um, I'm not, I'm really not sure if I desire to be married again. Um, I feel like I've had that, you know, in this life cycle. I had a marriage. I had what I thought was almost the perfect marriage till I realized it wasn't perfect. Um, and so now for me, greater than signing a piece of paper and being married is more so important to have someone who is true to who they are, who's honest, um, who's transparent, who's a protector. And when I say protector, I mean that in every way, spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can sign a piece of paper and say, we're married now. But no, I really want um, a man who is absolutely 100% true and real. And that doesn't mean I have to be married. And to be honest with you, I ain't gonna lie, I don't know. You go through too much trying to divorce if you need to get divorced after you get married. It's a lot, that shit is stressful. I'm gonna be honest, I mean, you know, and you never know if it's gonna work out or not. You praying and hoping that it is, but we don't Girl, know. I, went, I, I was and like, I Tina Turner, just home. give me my name. I ain't gonna lie. For me, and, and mm -hmm. then I'm gonna leave that man business yeah. alone. I, I was very, one of those people, I made a conscious decision. This was not part of my life plan. And I just feel like in yours, just for the record, I start no rumors and no lies. I ain't get cheated on or beat on or nothing like that. But for me, yeah. I just felt like when, when I select people in my life, I feel like that once I allow to come in my life, I have to respect them in my parting the same way I loved them when it was good. And so I see people, somebody, and they be like, oh, they just want to drag them and they right. just the worst in the world and they just so horrible. And in the back of my mind, I be like, but you picked them. They were your friend too. So in any situation, friend, personal, business, I realized that there, if there was a good time when whoever that person was, was good to me and that person was uh something that i loved or i care about and i've been hurt disrespected broken disappointed all of that but i felt like especially in a marriage i felt like like god i made this decision and so i'm gonna allow this to be between you and that person now everybody don't have that luxury but i don't need a judge a jury or 12 other people to tell you what you need to do to take care of your children, how you should take care of your children or what needs to be done yeah. and all of that. And I just thank God. I thank God from the heavens right. above. I don't care what nobody say. Everybody that know me, they daddy, daddy on another whole level. So mine was a bit different when I say when it came to that because Nobody going out father George Foster. I don't care what nobody say. Now what, how me and him feel, but as far as them children, 
and saying money or assets. I think when you're dealing with two people, and we're definitely two people, we are not money motivated. That's the crazy thing we really do match that. We are not money motivated. I heard somebody say the other day, but if you could buy a Rolls Royce, you could have one. If I had two extra cash, I'm going to go put some water in Africa or go build an orphanage. Now, I'm a car booty. I'm going to ride in the G-Wagon. I'm going to take pictures in front of it. But I'm not money motivated or money driven. And I'm going to throw it back because I know you said you wanted to ask me a question. But I, I feel like God birthed me to be a wife. I love being a wife. I love being a mother. Through everything that I do, I still love cook, cleaning, being the person that my family needs to depend on to have some womanly things being done. And the day I could put down being a boss, cause I got a million businesses going on at one time. But the day somebody come along and say, Max, just sit back and this y'all. What y'all want for dinner? What what what, what loads of clothes y'all need to watch? Because I want my feminine energy uh to lead from the front. This whole women liberation and I'm older, but um I, I an amazing helpmate. I'm looking for the person he can lead. Let me be the secretary. Let me be the marketing director for your company. You want me to write the proposal? I want to be the helpmate. I don't I don't want to be the person that's in control. But I know you got a question. But my question, because most people don't know, and I don't even know how to explain it. You have wealth before TV. And I see you doing these coaching classes or courses on your bit what was your business mail what, what business did you do what is it so a few things so uh we had a lawn company we had a cleaning company and after that and you know i was a teacher so i taught for years so i was doing all of that while teaching and then from there we got into this industry called property preservation um and then for property preservation you work on foreclosures for the banks so i was actually covering se seven states at one time um that was the peak of my, you know, industry piece was covering seven states at one time. And you just, you do work on foreclosures for banks, lawn cuts, uh, lock changes, evictions, um, storms come through, fire damage happens, you go in and you repair that. Um, so property preservation is a booming industry. So now I'm teaching people how to get in the game. Uh, most of my students are women. They come in, I show them, you know, how to get in the industry, run their companies, recruit their subcontractors. And it's been great. It's been great. It's been great. So far, I've had about 650, well, now like 700 um, entrepreneurs I've created since 2020. Okay. Okay. You got, you got the next question. They said I was talking. Yeah. I do have a question. No, I do. So you talked about um, you want to be married again. You feel like you um, were meant to be a wife. And that's a beautiful thing. First of all, I, I can imagine, I know you were an amazing wife. I already know that. Super supportive. Because that's you. That's you with your friends. So I know that's how you were in your marriage. Super supportive, right? Um, my question for you is, um, you know, having experienced a marriage um, where you had your children and you had this whole family unit, when it comes to, because I know you're dating, <laughs> I'm not going to... I'm not gonna say no. I'm not gonna say no. I'm not gonna do you like that. But I know you're dating, and I know you're not money driven. Okay. For the people on here, Shanita, who knows the type of men that you date? <laughs> um, <laughs> look, who knows the type? Because some people on here know the type of people you date. Let me tell y'all this, just so y'all know. Shanita had a uh, connected me at one time. <laughs> So you don't want to talk about that. I'm, you know, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move past. I'm gonna move past. Um, knowing the type of people you date, because I feel like you ain't gonna date an average Joe. I don't. I'm sorry. You're not. You're not. So while you're not money driven, would you say though you have a standard in terms of where they need to be financially in order for them to get okay, that so date? Y'all not gonna throw you. me under the bus you. about like the girl when she was talking about she wouldn't date the trash man. I think she answered it wrong. So let me, 
Let me give you an example about what I mean. Um, I have to have a standard at this point, right? Um, I'm, I'm about to hit the 50th floor, coming up on the 50th floor. And yes, there was a time, and it could be a time now if it's the right person that meets me uh, and what I need. Like you said, I think security is very important. How a person protects you spiritually, mentally, all that's high on my list. And I used to have the standard. Somebody used to say, Shanita, you only would date rich people or well-off people or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, listen, I could date the trash man. Cause if I date the trash man six months later, he gonna own the trash company. So I'm not tripping, I'm not tripping okay. about dating the trash man. That's not the issue in 2023. The issue for me about dating the trash man or somebody who doesn't match where I am in 2023, people might not like this response is social media. Here it is, you go get this guy and he might not necessarily be able to match what it is that you have financially, but he checks all the other boxes, right? And as a strong, smart woman, I believe I'm smart, I began to level up this man. We leveling up together. Like, hey, I'm gonna bring you up to where I am. Let me speak into the man in you, the king in you. Let me help you with your goals, your dreams, what it is you wanna do in life, right? And so literally, I now speak into this man and I bring him up. What is starting to happen that I see from a lot of my friends and a lot of my people is they date, I'm not gonna use the word down, they date financially lower they bring the man up. And then now once that happens, he begins to look out for other options on, okay, I got all my stuff together. I'm awesome and amazing. And then the conversation turned real quick. You're not the only person that want me. You're not the only person that see value in me. And I think they tend to kind of forget the person who was with them on the journey. Like that little saying, you went to the gym shoot with me. So I believe that because I'm older, there was a lot of us, when you take away social media, when a man found a good woman, they focused on that good woman and how can I build and grow? I just had a conversation with somebody I'm like this with, and I'm not gonna throw them under the bus. I said, listen, the reason why you can't find a wife is because you find a woman and she'll be 80%. Like they tell me everything. And she'll be 80%. And a week later, they'll be like, ah, sis, so I seen this other girl. And I'll be like, you just told me you met 80%. Oh, no. And you're like, oh, but I was scrolling on Instagram and I seen this other woman. And I believe now social media has just created too many options. Because you live in Huntsville, Alabama. Let mm, me tell y'all the okay. truth. If you take away social media, you only see who's in Huntsville, Alabama. Nine times out of 10, back in the day, you gonna marry who you seen in Huntsville, Alabama, or a city or two over. Those were your options. Now, right. Sarah from Huntsville, Alabama, is talking to Joe Bob in Nigeria because of social media. So yeah. to answer your question, no, I, yeah. have, a, I have a financial standard okay. and I can't, De derive or detour from that financial standard because I am a big package and I created the life that I want to live. And at this age, I just don't want to help somebody build up their life. That's right. I feel, so see, that's how I feel too. And you know, let me tell y'all, when she said big package, cause me and her, we had this conversation probably like a week ago. We got all these kids, okay? We got all these kids and we are thankfully to the gifts that God has given us. We have, are still allowing them to be accustomed to a certain lifestyle. We're able to make sure they do the things they want to do. They travel when we want to travel, right? All of that. So anybody coming in to our lives to try to court, date, whatever you want to say, they are going to have to be in a certain financial position because as a woman, and when you talk about being in your um, femininity and being in your female energy, 
we don't want to have to be splitting everything because in order for our kids to keep living the way we got them living on our own, you ain't able to do that. So we taking care of us, our kids, you, and don't let you have kids. So we gonna take care of them mm-hmm. too. That's not what we trying to do. You know what I'm saying? We, we need someone who can come in and who can hold it down as the man. That's not, not that's what I say now. That's how I feel. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I ain't gonna tell y'all what I've been telling, um, cause I ain't gonna lie, let me tell y'all, I was at school one day, and I was talking to this guy, cause he was sitting over there laying on the thing. I said, oh, look, you know I'm silly, Shanita, you know I'm silly. So I said, child, look at him over there sleeping. So I went over there and stomped his foot, and I was like, hey, <laughs> you over here cuddled up on this thing, right? I did, I did. So anyway, we started talking, just had some good conversation. And I told him, yeah, because if you ain't making no, 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 every month, then don't even try to talk to me because it ain't gonna work. Like me and him was talking, not about himself, but I was telling him how I am with people. Um, you got you got to bring a certain thing to the table because if not, I can do this by myself. I can do this by myself. So if we, if you got to be bringing. Okay, but wait, to it's table, two sides to this. I wanted to make sure I made this clear. So, ladies. I Make feel like I had this conversation with my best friend. Some of these got unrealistic expectations. Mm-hmm. Now, let me start right there with this financial. You cannot expect uh-huh. or be asking for, I'm just being hypothetical, a man can make a half million dollars a year. Uh-huh. You don't even make $50,000 a year. So let me roll this now thing back right. a little bit. Whatever it is, that we're talking about. First of all, two things. Number one is okay to build and grow with a man. I'm talking to everybody between 20 and 35, okay? 20 and 35, y'all can build and grow together. Y'all can get together and build an empire. That's 20 20 to 35. 35 and up, you need to look at life a bit different because you're on the side of life. Now, Uh with these standards, ladies, I tell people it's some great men that women are missing out on. Like, it's fact. I don't know where these unrealistic expectations of men got to make a quarter million dollars or got to make a half million dollars or got to be a million a millionaire to date me. I'm lost because I'm looking at life standards, right? The average American, let's just go with average. I think it went up from 24000 to about 30000 a year. So the average American out here is making about thirty thousand a year, maybe between three to five thousand dollars a month. That's on average, right? I'm talking about the women here. When you go to look at whom you're looking for, you have to look at where am I in my life, and I want to where I want to go, and where are they? How do the standards change? And I'm talking to mm-hmm. the women, where you making between fifty and a hundred, but he has to make. 250 to a million. Who made them rules up? Because last I checked, in this country, and these United States, if you find a man at 50,000 and above, that's above average. If you find somebody from 75 to 150, you living an amazing life. That person has access to get a, a place to live, to have a car to drive, to take two vacations a year. It's some unrealistic standards Mm -hmm. going on because of social media when it comes to this money. I want that girl who posted on Home Depot and I went to Home Depot, y'all sleeping on Home Depot. Home Depot got amazing health benefits, okay? They got healthcare, they have 401k. There's people at Home Depot that's making upwardly six figures, but your mindset saying, I ain't dating him because he working at Home Depot. Huh? At least you know where he at when it's time to go to work. An entrepreneur just be outside. Home Depot. I think thing. I think the biggest thing too, outside of that, and I'm gonna speak for me, and probably it will resonate with some people. Um, is also the mindset. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to share the same mindset. We have to set, share the same goals when it comes to legacy and leaving a legacy, and and, and you know building for our children's future, you know what I'm saying? So you can have little money or you can meet somebody who has a lot of money, but their mindset is not there. You know what I'm saying? And that matters too. So if 
I can't, okay, so I can't be with someone whose mindset is okay with being at a certain level. I need someone who's always striving for more and to do better because that's how I move. So for me, Shanita, I work circles around people. I just do. My work ethic, my drive is crazy. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I'll be like, God, dang, girl, how you do all that in one day? It's crazy. So I cannot be with someone and see me working circles around them all day and they only done me a little bit of something. And I'm like, because I'll start to be like, it causes me, I'm just gonna be honest, since we had an honest conversation, it will cause me to lose a level of respect because I feel like I'm working circles around you. Like, and so that's what, I mean, I be telling my girls all the time, man, I don't know. I don't know what my future looks like for me because, <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. Future <laughs> is on another <laughs> continent and another country. I can tell easily and I know effortlessly. That. Oh, I know and that. I, and I get in trouble when I say. I know. It. So, so Shania, we have to share something with them that we I don't think we've ever shared before. We're not gonna say a name, of course. Shanita, tell them about your hookup how you hit me up and how that went. Are you in hunt? So, Sorry from so the beginning. I called You're because uh, <laughs> someone called me from the continent of Africa and they were coming and this is how you know mm -hmm. you'll be knowing stuff. They called me and a lot of times as me being an ambassador working on the continent of Africa, it works on both ends. Like when I'm going to Africa or people are traveling there, I make sure they're good, they're safe, the business is gonna work out the right way. But most people don't know when people come from Africa to the US. And so it's called global inclusion. It means including business in both places, right? And so the person called me and was like, hey, I'm coming to America. I need you to make sure I need to stay at this hotel, you know, get me a car. I'm like, I don't work for you. You know, I say that to them all the time, but a lot of them are friends. And they said, but I'm getting ready to go to Huntsville. I said, Alabama. They said, yes. I said, for what? They said to buy some helicopters. Y'all ain't listening to me. I said, buy some helicopters. They like, yeah, you didn't know a lot of helicopters are built and produced in Alabama. Who would have ever knew, y'all? I didn't know they was building helicopters and mm -hmm. producing aircrafts in Alabama. So I was like, okay, you want, wait. And then they said, not helicop helicopters with an S. So, you know, that's a lot of money. So I'm like, okay. And they were like, yeah, so you got to get it taken care of. My and I was like, who live in Huntsville? Melody. So I was days. And so I asked them a few questions and I was looking somebody up through a person that you know that respects you and you respect them, I feel like they have to respect the situation. When you date a stranger, you just left outside. Where they have to hold some kind of respect. Oh my God, y'all, this is, this is No, but we gotta but get to the point of, I gotta I tell y'all about that? Melody character, which when we get to the end, y'all really gonna see how, the case may be melody was treated very well came yeah. back i could be transparent y'all mm -hmm. nothing physical happened right so this person is like i really mm -hmm. like her now me i'm like listen she a big package i, I want to make sure don't try. this lady got kids with an s so let's make sure and i remember yeah. like valentine's day was coming up and they was like, yeah, yeah. So, and this is not like Africa. I don't know why they got access to so many flowers so easily and effortlessly. They like, yeah, I want to send 250 dozens of roses to Melody. I said, what? So they was like, yeah, I want to send 250 dozens of roses to Melody. I'm like, this is in Africa and America. That's gonna be like twelve thousand dollars. Like what? And they like make it happen. I was like, and then me, I'm a hater. I'm like, I ain't sending mail 250. Dozens. I'm not about to give mail twelve. You can give mail twelve thousand dollars before we buy twelve thousand dollars worth of flowers. I, I'm not 
to friend that want to call on that. I wasn't being a hater, but we wasn't about to send twelve thousand dollars worth of flowers. Can you transfer Zell cash? <laughs> like twelve thousand dollars? I'm like, okay, just meet me in the middle, okay? I'm gonna go. We gonna structure some flowers. We are gonna spend a significant amount of money. I even found a black florist, y'all, because I was like, if I'm gonna give away this kind of money, I'm gonna give it to a black florist. I'm not about to call. Yeah, I didn't call Venus before. I called a black person that's selling flowers. Like, hey, we about to get this check. Let me get you some money for your business. So these people about to pay. Fast forward, Mel got the flowers. I just want to fast forward in the story that this person did everything necessary to date male, to court male, to not try to get her physically. Look, I just got chills. And my friend was just like, this is not the person for me. Like, I know this is not the person that God has for me. And I felt like, damn, that's grown because there's a lot of people out here that would have only looked at the financial part. They would have only looked at the money part or the gifts. And I'm talking about they was courting on the highest level. Like, I want her. But Mel looked at the person, their lifestyle, how much they traveled, what they got going on. And she was like, this is not my person. And this is what I say about the responsibility when other people hook up other people, because that thing didn't end with two people blowing up or not being friends or it didn't end up disrespectful nobody ended up feeling like somebody was using the other person and then guess what we me and her still friends me and him still friends i'm talking about every time he get a chance where male at i'd be like leave her alone he'd be like that's gonna be my wife i'd be like that is not your <laughs> wife because she said you are not her <laughs> wife okay that, that is not your wife so i i just I, I can respect it and ladies if somebody is not for you leave that man for somebody else leave yeah like home. That's don't right. don't that's waste right. don't people's miss. time don't break people's hearts I, I think that's a male you the mvp because i might have rolled that one out for a little bit all that money that was spent. <laughs> no and i told you so crazy but listen, y'all, this is our first time talking about this and like really going into details about the situation. But I remember I told her, I was like, mm -mm. I was like, no, I said, and you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to break his heart, but I know he's not, I would love just being his friend. We can be friends, but no, like, and then it was, well, I don't know if he would be able to be okay with just being friends with me because he really likes me, you know, and I'm not a user. Remember, I was like, I'm not going to use him. I'm not going to do none of that. Like. No, ma'am. And like you said, to this, I could text him or call him right now. I want to, and he'll be like, Melody. Melody. <laughs> he'll be like, Melody, what are you? <laughs> the, man, the man went crazy when she so, got the G-Wagon. But... Who bought that G-Wagon? Who bought her this car? I could have bought her this car. I said, but you didn't buy the car. So I don't know where the car came from, you but you decide they was upset. Like I could have bought the G wagon. I'm thinking to myself, Mel, they could have bought the G wagon, but Mel was like, no, like uh, my own G wagon. That's right. That's right. It's a level of independence, and it's a level of my blessings, knowing that it's only coming from God. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, I'm not having to use nobody for nothing. I ain't having to treat nobody for my blessings. They have to try to get over on nobody for my blessings. Like, this is legit 100, period. You know what I'm saying? Woo! Well, listen, Shanita, because I got to go up on the parasol in the sky, over there, the sky, up top, okay? But listen, <laughs> this has been so I much love fun. You and so, I love much. You so much. Listen, and I got to so do. I need to tell them real quickly. Y'all go follow her. She's also a coach, mentor. Um, she's always doing, you know, her philanthropy in Africa, so you can donate to that. I always say you can't get there, but work on sending the people that can't go. So make sure you go over there and donate. Dr. Shanita, C-H-A-N-I-T-A -A Foster. Y'all go follow her, support my girl. Yes, she I got an end. Real I got an end on, she look, is my shameless plugs. It's two things. No, three things that's close to my heart. First thing she said, uh, the philanthropy piece. I said this weekend, little money equals big money. 
You have to put seeds in the ground to get something. So you don't have to give to me. Give to somebody somewhere, I don't know, somewhere around the world. That's first. Number two, the coaching is peace, purpose, pay. Because you remember I said that I went through a, a depression. You know, I, I, I had a suicide attempt. I believe if you master your peace and you understand your purpose, getting paid will become so much easier. And it's like people want the money, the money, the money, the money, the money. And so I was like, okay. And literally we were just talking, you need to come. I even pay for you to come. We going to Dubai in October. You coming? Let's go. Let's go. Ma'am. Let's go. Beginning of I'm October, go. I do peace, you purpose, know, pay. Mel, you know how I travel, Mel. You up in Mercedes Benz and high level cars, but we're gonna go find our peace. We gonna we're gonna talk about purpose on the yacht. I don't know if y'all follow me, but everything I do gotta be five star. And then we're gonna talk about pay, but I, I want Mel to come. I'll take care of Mel's whole trip. The trip is only for about 10, maybe 15 people. I can't move around with that because I move at a certain level, but definitely. Peace for it lasts now. And I'm gonna send you a bottle when you get back now. Now. Yes. Listen, you, yes. you send the kid, I am really focused on after my nephew just passed away. Uh, now it's about two weeks, about two weeks ago. I really focus on people yeah. not yeah. So much just being health, wealthy, but also be healthy. And so it's right. not a shame because this is my life. And I really want people to be alive. I want people to live the best version of their life. I want people to wake up and to feel good. Having a child that went through cancer, having people that have so many ailments, we can't keep playing with our health. So it's not really a shame. Look, this is really near and dear to my heart that if you have the opportunity to have access to something, it may not just be alive. It could be sea moss. It could be whatever you want. Take care of your health. We get one life. We have one body. We have this mind and we have to take care of it. So I had to say that because those are my shameless plugs. I wouldn't be who I am if I'm not saving the world, loving people and getting healthy. Mel, I love you. I want to cry so bad. I thank you for being an amazing okay. Okay, friend. Don't you. Don't you. For being a friend that is not the TV friend, that checks on me, that calls. I know that those thousand people majority of them came from your side and there's some people that would be so afraid to share their platform to even go live with somebody because of their selfish intentions in life and in business and when i said mel let's just go live and talk you didn't say no girl let your manager talk to my manager or your people get with my people or don't talk about your book or don't talk about that alive juice. Focus on it. You were like, whatever you need. I asked you for some information the other day and I couldn't figure out how to get it. I kept asking people, how do you do this? How do you do that? And nobody wanted to give me the information, ma'am. You were the first person that I said, how do you do this? You said, girl, I'm gonna send you the number that da 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 da, -da and call them and it was something that small and so i thank you for being a real friend because on my lowest days i know that you got my back i know what it's like to go through this journey to, to have to deal with children i know what it's like to escape i was joking about a man being there but i get on the plane often it is my self-care to go be by myself and not and men get to be daddy when they want to. Mama's got to be mommy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we do need to decompress. And so I thank you for doing the same thing because we get judged for that. If we get on a plane, we on the boat, we on the beach, we a horrible mama. But they can go off in the world and go do whatever they want to do, be what they want to be. And nobody questions.
the level of parenting of who they are and what they're doing. So I just wanted to end by saying I thank you and I love you. And I can't wait for us to link up. Post the video, girl. I got to see the video of us. Okay. I love you, too. I love you. Thank you so much. Um, you already know how I feel about my sis right here. Y'all, Dr. Shanita Foster, head over there, get her book. Girl, I'm not tripping. I'm depressed. Get that alive, you. Sign up for her peace, pay, purpose, mentorship. Y'all, go on and get with it. Bye. They're going to be mad okay? at us in Dubai. I love you, man. That's all right, I get bro. I get bro. Oh, I get paid for. I ain't even worried about it, man. Oh, girl, I know. I, I know. I, I already know, girl. Love you. Amazing exchange between sisters, between friends. I hope you guys got what I got out of it. I loved everything. I loved the tough questions that Shanita asked. I love Mel's honesty, both of their honesty, uh, actually, just awesome. So again, just wanted to bring it to you guys that do not have Instagram. Please make sure to like this video, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. Ciao with you guys soon. Bye.